Hello there, my fellow knobs and mech boys, and welcome to another lore video focused on green skin war machines. Last time we talked about the smaller ish dreadnought sized killing machines of the greenskins, and today we will raise the stakes significantly, at least in size. We will do that by talking about the hulking and devastatingly powerful Gargans and a smaller but no less dangerous Stampa. We are going to learn what these things are, how they get made, what they're armed with, and a few of their variants. I am your host, for today the Greenskin narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more, shall we? The orc equivalent of an Imperial Titan is called a Gargant. Gargants are as much idols to the savage orc gods, Gork and Mork, as they are engines of destruction. Big Mech orcs receive a divine vision of a kind from Gork, or possibly Mork, and set about to bring that vision to life in the artistic vision of thick armor plates, smoke belching engines, and lots and lots of very big guns. This activity quickly spreads among other Big Macs in the local orc settled area who seek to compete in Gargant building, and soon enough Gargants pop up all over the place. The construction of Gargants is one of the typical signs of an impending war from an orc held star system. In an orc warband, there can exist Gargants and Gargan esque war machines, from Kilakans crewed by a single Gretchen, to the vast armored behemoths that are the Mega Gargants. Orc Gargants are a very varied lot, with no two ever being exactly the same, as is common with all slapdash orc technology. Thanks to the frenzied imagination of the mech boys building them, orc weapons tend to be haphazard, unreliable, and very noisy. When they do work, however, they can inflict gruesome damage. Gargants are commonly equipped with at least one close combat weapon, because charging in and bashing the enemy heads is considered a very orky thing to do. For defense, Gargants generate power fields that are the equivalent of an Imperial Titan's gravitic void shields. However, while Gargants tend to have more intense and reflective power fields than the standard Imperial Titan, they cannot regenerate them during battle as the Titan is able to do. Orcs do not rely on an automated system to the same extent as other starfaring races of the galaxy, and Gargants thus carry a large crew of both Orcs and Gretchen. The crew is led by a captain, who relays orders through a body of officers. A speaking tube is the preferred method of communication within the Gargant. Every greenskin officer is in charge of one section of it, be it a weapon, the magazine, the engine room, or any other chamber. Under the officer is a crew of orcs and Gretchen, who carry out the orders passed down to them. Repair crews are composed entirely of Gretchen, whose smaller bodies suit them well for crawling through cramped spaces, armed with a wrench and an oily rag. Compared to an Imperial Titan, the Gargant has weaker armor and comparatively shorter range weaponry. Nevertheless, they are very difficult to destroy due to their dense, albeit crude, construction. While Gargants do not suffer from potentially fatal plasma reactor meltdowns, they are particularly vulnerable to fires and magazine explosions. There is no set size for a Gargant, although the smaller ones are often called Stampas. The large machine's armor basically consists of bits of metal of various sizes bolted together that makes the Gargant look like it's wearing a skirt. Gargants are viewed by the Orc race as the avatars in the physical universe of their gods Gork and Morg. They have a special weapon location known as a belly gun, which houses either a gutbuster mega cannon or a snapper close assault weapon. The Smasher variant of the Gargant uses the Gutbuster, while the Crusher variant employs the Snapper. The Snapper, like the Gutbuster, is a unique orc weapon, and is actually two weapons in one, consisting of a pair of spiked metal jaws used in close combat, and a large melta gun with a very limited range. 
Snappers are powerful enough to bite through the armor of a titan, amputating its legs. A standard bipedal gargant is normally around the height of a four-story building. If the building had several large guns and custom force fields bolted onto it. A typical gargant, if there is such a thing, may field two or three super guns, titan killer equivalent ballistic weaponry. It can also sport a small number of additional weapons, likely built into the chest or head section. The weapons used by a gargant will depend very much on the materials at hand, as on the orcs constructing the gargant. It may make use of anything from a lava to a zap cannon as the primary armaments, and will usually have two of these. In addition, the Gargant will also be able to support many Gatling cannons, flamers, and myriad other kinds of death dealers. The Gargant is a great source of pride for the orc warboss who owns one, as it shows both his wealth in teeth and that he is a superlative big mech, meaning that he has great technological competency. Gargants are common among the Cult of Speed and the Bad Moons clan, though almost every orc tribe has their own preferential gargant loadouts. Apart from these standard kinds of gargant, there's also a couple more strange and specialized versions. The Steam Gargants. Steam Gargants are primitive steam-powered gargant war machines used by the feral orcs. They are the product of feral orc boiler boys, and their fierce rivalry with the pig dogs. Being orcs, both sides try to outdo the other in producing bigger and better weapons. For the pig dogs, this manifests in colossal creatures of war like the Orchiosaurus, but for the boiler boys, this manifests in steam gargants. Extremely primitive, even by orcish standards, these steam-driven vehicles have even less standardization about them than standard orc gargants constructed by mechboys. While most orc gargants are built as living tributes to Gork and Mork, feral orc boiler boys often have little idea of this. But like all orc gargants, it is very large, well-armored, and shooty. The mechboy gargants are a variant built personally for a mechboy as opposed to the more common practice of a mechboy building such a machine for a powerful war boss. Often built at the last minute before an orc war is launched, when a mechboy realizes he doesn't have any big weapon for himself. Mechboy gargants are constructed at desperate speed from whatever scrap metal he can find. Though a mechboy gargant may not be as big or as powerful as a great gargant or a mega gargant, its mechboy owner still considers it special and custom. The Great Gargants These are more powerful versions of the orc gargant, being larger in size and sporting more weapons and custom force fields. They are somewhat rare, as the amount of bullying required to get one built ensures that only the greatest orc war bosses can raise their massive bipedal forms. They often double the amount of super guns found on smaller gargants, sometimes by a form of crude twin linking that seems to involve huge amounts of rope, chains, and nails. As well as a battery or two of artillery, great gargants often feature fearsome belly guns and high-powered energy weapons mounted in the head section. Such a weapon emplacement is often referred to as the Gaze of Morg, or is it Gorg? Another notable weapon often found on Great Gargans is the Lifta Droppa, a fearsome application of tractor beam technology. Dwarfing even the Great Gargans, the Mega Gargans rival the size of an Imperator Titan. Bristling with enormous guns, missiles, and other types of outlandish weapons of mass destruction. By orc standards, mega gargants are very sophisticated machines that only the most brilliant mechboy can engineer, and are among the most devastating orc weapons deployed only for the largest of wars. The Stampa. The Stampa is sometimes called a smaller orc gargant the equivalent of an Imperial Battle Titan like the Warhound. In true Orc fashion, every Stampa is very different, but equally deadly. 
The standard stampa, if such a word can be applied to orc machines, generally consists of one arm with some kind of massive hammer or chainsaw or equally suitable smashy slashy thing, with the other arm consisting of several massive guns and rockets, with the body festooned with smaller guns. There are two main subcategories of stampa, namely the goth claw stampa and the big mech stampa. The goth claw stampa was popularized by the goth clan, although it is found among other clans, replacing the stampa's death cannon and standard titan close combat weapon with two piston-driven big claws. Such is the orc way that each weapon is deadly in a new and surprising way. Some have massive claws which toss tanks aside or stack them up like a macabre house of cards. Others connect the two arms together in a massive rolling pin type device capable of clearing paths through even the most well guarded gun line. They are also armed with the Flame Belcha, a very powerful Titan grade flamethrower. The Claw Stampa is a Stampa variation that is very rarely seen on the battlefield unless a huge goth war ensues, because they are built by goth mechs, who normally prefer more infantry-based war machines. The Big Mech Stampa The Big Mech Stampa does the precise opposite, replacing the close combat weapon with even more guns. Massive cannon, insane rapid-fire gatlings, a veritable plethora of laser guns, Occasionally a rocket piloted by Grotz, willing or otherwise, and not so occasionally six of such rockets. Some of the mechs, feeling a little overprotective of their creations, customize the force field to try and deflect the incoming fire, which generally is not very much relied upon. Some mech stampas have titan weapons on their arms, usually looted from an imperial war machine. Orc mechs are known to customize their stampas with bright colors, banners, skulls and spikes. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about gargants and stampas for today. Are you a fan of these orcish titans? Would you use them in your army? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more videos. And if you'd like to help me keep the channel alive, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. May Gork, or possibly Mork, watch over you.